Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! Last week we built our biggest build ever, this massive 18 inch by 10 inch tower and we were able to fill pretty much the entire structure of the thing in one video. But this week it's time to bring it to life with some details because the devil's always in the details but the more of them you do the better it looks. So I don't want to make you guys wait any longer, let's just jump right into the build. I'm going to want to add a bunch of windows on my tower, so to start I'm going to trace out some MDF and make a rough template. The first one I traced out was slightly too big, so I'm going to make a smaller one. Again, similar to the archways from the last video, I want this to be generic enough to reuse, so they're just going to be simple archways. Pro tip, whenever possible, cut out your MDF with a pair of kitchen scissors. It's much easier and faster than a knife. That's much better. Okay, now I'm going to trace out this template onto foam core 40 times. This is because I want to have a window pane on the inside and on the outside, and I want to have four windows for each story. Once all of those are drawn, I'm going to draw some rough brick patterns onto them all, and texture them with tin foil. Then I'll just cut them out and make sure the bricks roll over onto the sides. Okay, that was quite the process. Now it's time to add a cross to these. For this, I'm going to use some thin sculpting wire. I'll take one of my windows and cut a couple pieces to test fit with wire cutters, and then use those two pieces as a guide for all of the others. These don't need to be too precise because they'll be glued to the back of the window frame and sandwiched in between the wall. To attach the wires, I'm going to set my hot glue gun to low temp and add a couple of drops to the wires, then press them into place and hold them with my fingers wiping away all the excess hot glue to not create any gaps. This is only possible with low temperature. If you try this with high temperature, you will literally burn the skin off your fingers. I know this from experience. So here's what that should look like. Now you just need to do that for 19 of your 39 remaining frames because the insides will not need it. These are gonna be sandwiched, so you don't wanna double up. All right, so now I'm gonna set all the frames aside for a bit, and I'm gonna take my template and mark out where I want all of my windows to be. This is gonna be about a half inch up from the floor. I just cut a little dummy piece of foam core at a half inch to act as a guide for this, and then I'll use my pen and fill in the area of the template to make the window. This is gonna make it really easy to see what needs to be cut out, and then I'll just use my knife and cut it out. Once that's ready, I'm gonna take all my outside window frames with the crosses and glue them into place. I'm intentionally leaving the inside frames aside for now. I want my tower to have a cellar, and a cellar needs a trap door. So I'm going to draw one out on a scrap piece of foam core and then just cut it out. For the handle, I'm going to cut a small circle of foam core and glue it into place. Then I'll cut the door out and glue it to a piece of my sculpting wire trim it to size, and then also cut out a loop of wire, and glue that loop of wire to the handle. I'm also going to make sure I transfer the wood grain onto the sides, and trim my door to fit snugly. Once everything is ready, I'm going to use hot glue and secure the door to the floor, making sure no glue gets on the wire. This is going to allow the hatch to actually open and not get stuck. Speaking of the cellar, let's make that. I'm going to use some 1 inch pink polystyrene and trace out my ground floor onto it. Using a pen, I'm going to make sure I have a solid line to define where the base sits. Then I'm going to draw out the rough shape of my base for the tower. I want to have a couple steps leading up to the front door, so I'll draw out where I want those to be also. Using my kitchen knife, I will cut the base out, being intentionally rough here to create a rocky texture. Sometimes using my hands to break sections off. Once I'm happy with that, I'll draw out the stairs and then cut them with smaller knives and bevel the edges. Now I'll texture the whole thing with a tinfoil ball. After that's all set, I'm going to draw out a grid the same way as before, using my right angle to make sure everything is square, but this time I won't be cutting out the grid with a knife. I'm just drawing deep lines with my pen, because I want this cellar to look more raw and less carved. I'm even going to trace out roughly where the wall is and add some extra cracks to the tiles. The next step is going to really tie this base to the tower and help hide the seam. 
I'm gonna rip and break chunks of foam into rock shapes and glue them around the base of the tower. This makes it look much more natural. I want one really big rock at the front of the tower, snugly hugging one of my pillars. I'm gonna take a break from the base and draw some more wood grain on all of my pillars from before. The wire brush worked well, but because I've drawn wood grain on everything with foam core, uh, I want them to look consistent. Now I'm gonna glue all of my wooden pillars inside my building, picking areas where they can hug the walls or the stairs. Just kind of going by feel here. Once they are glued, I'm gonna trim them down to the same height as my walls, and then draw a bit of wood grain on the tops. Okay, back to the base before I put the pillars in all the other stories. I'm gonna cover a bunch of the areas of the base with white glue, making sure not to get too close to the walls. Then I'm gonna drop some rocks into the glue, and once I'm happy with that, I will cover the rest of the exposed glue with baking soda. Now I'll set the base aside to dry while I move on to create my doors. I want these to be very durable, so I'm gonna draw and cut myself some frames out of MDF. I'm cutting four frames, two for each door, and I'm making one door for the first floor and one door for the balcony. Then I will use the template to cut out the opening in the walls the same way as I did for my windows. Now to make the wood frame, I'm gonna trace it out onto foam core and use the same techniques as I did with the trap door. Using the wire again to create the working hinge, drawing on the texture and creating the handles in all of the exact same techniques. Once all of the pieces are ready, I'm just gonna sandwich the door and wire in between the MDF and glue it to the side of the building. Then I can take my textured frames and glue to hide the inner workings. Now I'm just gonna use some scrap foam cord that I have pre-drawn with wood grain to make myself some steps up to the door. And once that's done, I'm gonna repeat all of those techniques onto the balcony doorway. One last thing I did off camera was add railings to the edges of where the stairs meet the next floor. And I just did that with little strips of foam core with wood grain drawn onto them. Okay, so now those are all of the interior details finished. Uh, as for furniture in this thing, I wanna keep it totally clean because that way I have more options and playability to be modular with it and put, you know, change it up per occasion. So I don't wanna add anything too specific. But this tower does need a roof. So I'm gonna grab the foam core circle I cut out in last episode when making the balcony and some cardstock. Then I'm gonna use it to create a shallow cone to be the skeleton for my shingled roof. I'm gonna place the foam core inside the cone with a slight overhang and then use hot glue along the seam to hold it together. After that's all set, I'm gonna mark out where my pillars connect with the roof and cut out those sections so that it has a flush fit. Then I'm gonna change my mind and cut away most of the overhang anyway. For the shingles, I'm gonna start by making a template uh, for a line of them out of MDF. They're a half inch wide by one inch tall. Keep in mind that they will have a large overlap with each other once placed on the roof. They will have various depths and I'll just cut all of those out with scissors. Now I trace my template onto the edge of a one inch thick piece of pink foam because it is more durable than the blue variety. Once I've traced out the pattern, I bust back out the proxon and just let the wire dig into where I had drawn my lines. So the basic process here is that I'm gonna take my wire brush and apply some wood grain texture to the shingles. Then I use my proxon to cut out a line of them and I repeat that over and over and over and over and over until I have a large pile of shingle strips that I feel is enough to cover the roof. I've never done a roof like this before, so I really had no idea how much I would use. This pile ended up being more than enough by a, quite a bit. Uh, I'll save the leftovers for a different craft. Now to begin the process of covering my roof with these shingles. I'm gonna grab my tacky glue, my pile of shingles, and an X-Acto knife, and then just start bending and slightly ripping my strips to make them fit the curve of the roof. The nice thing about tacky glue is that it's thick and does a pretty good job of holding the shingles in place so that you can move on to the next line without worrying about them moving around too much. I'm only really using my knife here to cut out gaps in the shingles for the pillars 
or if two lines of shingles don't match up very well. Here's what it looks like when it's all covered. I'm not too worried about the sloppiness at the top because I'm gonna cover that with a cap. And that part is really simple. I'm just making another little cone out of construction paper and then hot gluing it into place. It's time for the last step before painting. Because we've done a pretty decent job making sure everything sits flush with each other, our tower doesn't need too much help sitting together nicely. But I want to secure this thing together. So I'm going to put some magnets in it. So I got these from Amazon. They're pretty reasonably priced. I'll put a link to them in the description if you want to get some for yourself. Taking a Sharpie, I'm just marking out the areas that I want to cut out on the base and all of my pillars. Roughly in the middle, this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just hitting the top and bottom of all the pillars. For the top floor, I'm just marking out the bottom of the balcony. I'll have to reinforce this later uh, because it's thinner foam than the pillars, but for now, I'm just making sure it lines up. Now to cut out those areas. I'm gonna use my wood burner, very carefully on medium temperature. You could use a knife if you don't have one, but this is definitely much easier. So just like that, very gently burning a shallow circular hole that's just big enough for the magnets to fit inside. I'll do that for all of the areas that I marked out with my Sharpie. Once all of your holes are cut, you just take your hot glue gun and fill the holes with glue. Then you drop a magnet in. Make sure you have a system to ensure the polarity of your magnets is correct. You don't want to have to be digging these out after you've put them in because your floors are actually pushing away from each other. The best part of this is the satisfying click when the two floors stick together. This makes all of the tediousness worth it. So the reason why I like these magnets is because they're strong enough to hold all of your stuff together pretty, uh, you know, solidly, but they're not so strong as to rip your foam apart as you're trying to get them apart. Uh, they need to be strong enough to hold, but not stronger than hot glue. So these are good and uh, I'll put exactly these in the description like I said before. So for the balcony to reinforce, I'm just gonna use some of the scrap foam core with wood grain and line it up with the holes and then secure it with a bunch more hot glue. That's more than enough to hold these magnets in. So now I can just glue them in place like before. And that's it friends, all of the details are completed. Here's what it looks like so far. This thing is looking fierce. It's ready to be primed and painted, which is what I'm going to be tackling in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the build so far. I'm really excited to show you guys what it looks like when it's all complete. If you enjoyed this video, I have plenty of other terrain making and painting videos that you can check out while you wait for the third and final part of this build. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. So I'm going to use some magnets. <laughs> Can you stop laughing at me saying magnets? <laughs> magnets! Like, I'm going to use magnets! <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. What are you going to use? So I'm going to use magnets! <laughs> <laughs> There's also drilling. This just in. I'm using magnets. <laughs> <laughs>